up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony today we are in the all new kia telluride courtesy of fred beans kia in mechanicsburg pa and i don't know about you guys but i've been seeing commercials for this thing like crazy lately so i had to take a look at it so as always you guys let's start with pricing i said there will be several different trim levels available for the telluride first one being the lx starting at thirty three thousand six hundred ninety dollars then you have the S for $35,990, EX, which is the one we have today, that one starts at $39,090, and lastly, the SX for $43,490. And by the way, that was pricing for the front wheel drive. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $2,000 to any of those prices. And but so that regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Telluride will be the same. Powering this one is going to be a 3.8 liter, naturally aspirated V6 engine, putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 262 pound-feet of torque available at 5,200 RPM. Again, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers coming in at 20 city, 26 highway for the front wheel drive and 19 city, 24 highway for the all wheel drive. And by the way, fuel recommendation on this one is 87 octane, so regular unleaded fuels. That's definitely a money saver as well. But so now before we do any kind of crazy accelerations in the Telluride, I did want to mention there are some driving modes available on this one. That drive mode button is located just behind the shifter there, but that's going to give you drive modes like eco, comfort, sport, and smart. And essentially what they will do is adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response. And by the way, eco and smart actually can send 100% of the power to the front wheels, even if you go with the all wheel drive. So I thought that was something definitely worth mentioning, especially if you're going back and forth between whether you should get the front wheel or the all wheel drive version. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in sport mode here here and I think we are going to do a little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new Kia Telluride up to speed. Here we go. Oh, okay. This thing definitely pulls hard, especially in the higher RPM range, but dang, definitely no issues with merging onto the highway. Gotta say, I was definitely curious because this is a heavier vehicle, a much larger SUV, but yeah, definitely still gets up to speed pretty good. And so then as always to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel anti-lock disc brakes, including ventilated front discs and solid rear discs. And so far on my short test drive today, I've had absolutely no issues with the braking feel and Hyundai Kia typically do really good with that braking feel so definitely on point there and so now as I am turning on to the back roads here let's touch on handling and suspension a little bit Kia Telluride will actually give you torque vectoring cornering control which uses the steering input sensors to detect unwanted understeer and then helps correct the stability under certain driving conditions for instance when you start to slip and there's also a locking center differential as well which helps with load speed traction and bad road conditions so again kind of pays homage to those off-road Telluride commercials you been seeing lately and up front you will find an independent McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back an independent multi-link rear suspension again with the stabilizer bar and as far as the steering feel goes it is as expected definitely not the heaviest steering feel but it is very predictable so I have no issues with the steering feel on this one and when it comes to ride quality I gotta be honest it is soaking up the roads imperfections quite nicely but perhaps the best thing about the driving dynamics and the Telluride is the cabin noise or lack thereof there is almost nothing coming into the cabin from the outside no wind noise really no engine noise actually either but it is an extremely quiet cabin so in a larger suv like this that is definitely a good thing and by the way that may be due in part due to the sound absorbing windshield glass so kia did put that on all telluride models so that's probably going to help with the lack of cabin noise but anyways touching on visibility a little bit actually not all that bad i actually have a three row hyundai santa fe but i gotta say visibility almost feels better in the larger telluride my opinion there's definitely less bulkiness in the back there also another thing i mentioned a lot of times is the third row headrests kind of impeding rear visibility but there's third row headrests they're kind of small actually so again visibility is 
definitely on point with this one. But so enough with the driving dynamics, you guys. Let's check out the exterior of this all new Kia Telluride. And so up front at first, I want to mention that grill design actually will differ slightly depending on the trim level. For example, if you go with the LX trim, you will find a matte black front grill. However, with the SEX or SX trim levels, you will find a dark metallic front grill. Then looking down a little bit, if you go with the S trim level and up, you will actually get front and rear skid plates as well. Again, off-roading features very present in the Telluride, so that is definitely nice. Also, eight inches of ground clearance is definitely pretty good for a three row. And you will find a satin chrome front air duct if you go with the S trim level and up. Otherwise, with that LX trim level, you're gonna find a body colored front air duct. Then as far as the lighting goes, projector beam headlights will come standard with the LX, S, and EX trim levels. However, if you go with the SX, you will get LED headlights. And by the way, LED daytime running lights will actually come standard for every single trim level. Then make your way to the side. Rear privacy glass will come standard on every single trim along with chrome window surrounds. Roof rails, again, standard for every single trim level and there will be body colored heated outside mirrors with led integrated turn signals again standard across the board that's definitely always nice to see Looking down at the wheel setup, 18 inch alloy wheels will come standard with the LX. And if you go with the S trim level and up, you will find 20 inch alloy wheels. But then make your way to the back. There is a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light back there. Just below that rear window wiper. And if you go with the EX trim level and up, and again, that's the one we have today, you will find LED taillights back there. But just below all of that, a single exhaust outlet with dual tips. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Now, since we are around back, as far as opening up that rear lift gate, there actually is a button on the key fob if you wanted, but it is a hands-free lift gate if you go with the EX trim level and up like we have today. And then once opened up, behind that third row, cargo capacity comes in at an even 21 cubic feet. If you folded that down behind that second row, this is going to bump it up to 46 cubic feet. And with all rows folded down, that comes in at 87 cubic feet. So for comparison's sake, so you have something to reference it to, Honda Pilot comes in at 83.9. Toyota Highlander 83.7 and the Ford Explorer 80.7 so definitely a good bit of space in the Telluride. Then let's make our way forward to the legroom when it comes to that third row legroom that is going to come in at 31.4 inches so for reference I'm at even six feet tall that third row however is probably going to be best left for small children. Make your way to the second row this is where this one really shines 42.4 inches so again six feet tall absolutely ton of space back there and of course I always like to mention there is rear ventilation for both second and third row so everybody is going to stay comfortable also I know a lot of you guys may be curious eight passenger seating is actually going to come with the LX and the EX trim level like we have today and if you wanted seven passenger seating meaning that center row is going to have captain's chairs that is going to be found on the S and SX trim levels and actually the SX is also going to give you heated second row seats along with second row sunshades and actually the EX that we have today gets them as well so that is definitely nice, especially if you have a newborn, you want to keep the sun out of their eyes. So sunshades are always appreciated. But now let's make our way to the front seats. Leatherette surfaces will come standard on this one. Power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar support will come with the S trim level. And those front seats then will be heated as well. And actually the EX trim level is going to add leather surfaces like you're seeing now, along with the power adjustable passenger seat and ventilated front seats as well. And I found it kind of cool where they put the buttons for the ventilated and heated seats too. Kind of front there elevated above everything. So I thought that was a pretty cool design there, but SX trim level is also gonna give you memory settings if you wanted it. But now let's take a look up front. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel will come standard. It will come leather wrapped for every single trim level and heated if you go with the EX or the SX trim level. But now, when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key on this one. You do have your Kia logo on the one side and absolutely nothing on the other side because all of the buttons on this one, it's a pretty cool key, are located on the side. So you have your lock, that's gonna be the biggest button, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch, and of course that panic button, but it's all gonna be located on the side of the key. I found that pretty cool and unique. But nonetheless, to start this one up, simply put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. 
And once started up, tachometer is going to be on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. That's going to give you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, along with what drive mode you're in, the outside temperature, when you need your next oil change, and there's a bunch of other things you can check out as well. Then when it comes to overall interior quality, LED interior lighting will come with the S trim level and up. Power sunroof that we have today is going to come with the S and EX trim levels. And if you wanted a dual panel power sunroof, that's going to be with the SX if you wanted that one. Also, another thing I absolutely love about the Telluride is the wood green interior accents. And that's going to be coming with the EX trim level that we have now and the SX as well. But definitely gives this one a very upscale appearance on the interior here. And along with that, the EX trim level is also going to give you ambient lighting as well, giving you eight different color options. But if you really wanted to go all out, go with the SX trim level because that is going to give you 64 different interior LED ambient color options. So that is definitely probably a little bit overkill, but it's pretty darn cool that it's there. But home light controls are also going to come with the SX trim level. And overall, everything is laid out very nicely in this Telluride. Got to say, I'm definitely a fan of the interior. Everything from the LED interior lighting to all the aluminum trim accents, like just in front of the overhead sunglass holder here even, those didn't need to be up there. Usually it's plastic on every other vehicle, but they're aluminum here. But perhaps the best part about the interior is this awesome looking tech display, which kind of looks like it's sitting on the wood grain trim accents here, but eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the LX and the S trim levels. However, if you go with the EX or the SX, you will get a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display display just like all the BMWs I review. But Bluetooth and audio streaming is gonna come standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, again, same thing. Factory navigation system is gonna come with the EX or the SX. And of course, you could check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, cool little features I wanted to mention when it comes to the sound system. For the EX and the SX trim levels, there is something called a quiet mode for the audio system that actually is gonna cut the audio in the second and third rows. What other SUV has that? None that I know of. And also for the EX and SX trim levels, there's something called a driver talk system, which allows the front seat occupants to speak to rear passengers via a microphone, kind of like the school bus driver did on your way to school. So I kind of thought that was kind of interesting. Honestly, probably don't need that. It's not a school bus, but still kind of cool that it's there. Anyways, back to the sound system. Six speakers is going to come with the LX, S, and EX trim levels. And for the SX, you will find a 10 speaker surround sound system with an external amp and subwoofer. But we we do have this six speaker sound system with us today. So what do you say? Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and uh, let's test out the clarity of this one. Nothing like blasting the radio system with a ton of bass next to a playground, let me tell you. But dang, good bit of bass there. Not the most bass I've ever heard. It is still a six speaker sound system, but honestly, definitely more than enough of a sound system for the Telluride. But then last thing on the tech display, at least I wanted to mention is when you do put the Telluride in reverse, there is a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines that is going to come standard with every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you will find latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard rear child door locks, a tire pressure monitoring system. And get this, this is one of the best parts standard safety features for every single trim level get ready blind spot collision avoidance assist rear driver attention warning system forward collision avoidance with pedestrian detection forward collision warning lane departure warning lane follow assist lane keep assist park distance warning rear cross traffic alert adaptive cruise control and an auto dimming rear view mirror so standard safety across the board is definitely quite impressive on the telluride anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like the video and subscribe feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there and i will see you guys in the next video stay out